many of you who don't know, but uh, I am one of uh, India's youngest female PR CEOs in the country and uh, with a, within the whole network of Webber Shandwick. And I know you guys are clapping and uh, that's great, but I think what's important for you all to understand is how I got to this stage. What are the lessons in life that I learned that brought me to this stage? And I think I'm going to start by telling you how uh, positivity helped me to be who I am today and how you can learn from that as well to make sure that you adopt those right choices and make the right choices in your life to bring you to where you want to be as in the future. Um, when I was only two, I lost my dad. And I was brought up by my mom and my sister. We were three women in the house. And at that age of two, three, four, and five, all you're thinking about is to go out and play. Play with the kids and have a great time. But at that early age in my life, I had to go back home and help my mom and sister to cook and clean at home. Now, everybody could look at that situation and go and say that, oh my God, that's so annoying. I want to go out and play. I don't want to go home and cook. And I don't want to go home and clean and, and throw a tantrum and resent that situation of your life. But you know what it taught me in that early stage? The choice I made was to go back home and help cook and clean. And that's what made me one of the most acclaimed pastry chefs, well, only amongst my friends. But they enjoy food that I make for them every single day. And the most important thing was also cleanliness. And, and you know, the whole choice that I made taught me how to live with collaboration. So I was also in a convent school, like all of you, with great aspirations. Um, I was an athlete. Uh, I ran for the state of Maharashtra, and I was supposed to run for the national level. And my mom had to make that decision either to drop me out of one year of school or to not let me go for that national level championship. So what happened was the decision that was made is that there's no future in athletics. There's no, um, you know, you, you're not going to get a good husband if you uh, continue to keep running around like that. And so the choice you have to make is not go and run that race. As a little child, when you are faced with that situation, again, all you would do is react with resentment. You would rebel. You would feel like no one loves me. No one really see, you know, wants me to be who I want to be. And the choice is being not made by me. It's being made by my mother or the external world around me. And you, and you would live with a lot of negativity. But over time, I decided, and at that, again at that early age, I thought through. And I said, athletics is not about winning a race. It's about excellence. And I think that's the important choice that I want to make at this early age in my life, that I want to excel no matter in what I do. I went on to pass my graduation as an economics uh, topper in Mumbai University, and I excelled at what I did. I, with, like most of you, will leave college and go with this great aspiration to work with the best organizations in the country. So I joined a very popular uh, PR agency of that time at a tender age of about 19, um, because I had to start working very early in my life as well. And before you know it, in five months, um, they sacked everybody in their organization, everybody but me and a few. So if you're at that age of 20 to 19, 20, you're thinking, what am I doing here? I'm going to just quit and go and find something else somewhere else. What, is, what, is, what kind of organization is this that just wakes up one day and sacks everybody and sends them home? How can they do that? I mean, those are the negative thoughts that would have run in my mind and the negative thoughts that would have engulfed you and made you run away from that situation. But you know what? I thought, 
hey, they sacked everybody, but they didn't sack me. There must be something that I can do to build this place and make it better and what, what, what the owners or what the promoters really want it to be. So I stayed the course. It's the choice I made to stay the course, pursue it, and that agency went on to become one of India's largest PR agencies as I grew. I grew, I became the CEO, and today I'm a CEO, and you guys all clapped. I became the youngest CEO, but it did not get, I didn't get here by just, you know, passing one day, the, one day after the other. I had to make choices, very difficult choices, in very difficult situations. Being a woman, being a woman in a man's world where all the other agency heads are largely men, you often get belittled even before you enter a room. But the choice I made is to stand by my perseverance, my focus, and my passion, and live each day with the positivity to no matter what the situation brought out to me. And I think that's important for us to learn as we grow in our careers. So I sat one day and I looked at myself and I said, do I want to be a CEO like everybody else, running from one meeting to the other, or you know, doing one conference call after the other? I said, you know, I'd be like everybody else. I don't want to do that. The choice again that I make, no matter how busy I am, I will focus on doing work that enables me to tell positive stories of change. Positivity. In my profession, nobody, no media person likes a positive story. You go to a media house, you talk to them, you talk to the journalists and say, I have this great story of some great guy doing something really unique. They'd be like, ah, tell me somebody who, a politician who's cheated somebody, or tell me something about someone who's killed somebody. That's the kind of stories they like. But I still chose to live my path of positivity, and I work each and every day to find positive solutions and make positive choices in every difficult situation that comes by me. Let me take you through an example of a state called Haryana. These numbers will shock you. These numbers tell you that in Haryana, the highest crime rate against women every single day, we have women who are constantly attacked, raped, and not just by anybody else, but their own family members. I mean, look at what that situation would tell you, and it's only about what? It's not even less than, it's less than 50 kilometers away from where we are sitting today. And that's largely because of the imbalance in the sex ratio. So there are men who are way higher in number compared to the women. As a result of which, when they reach a particular age, they start looking to find their opportunity to find a bride or to go and, you know, they buy brides from the other state in, in Assam and Northeast. They actually go out and commit various crimes. And if you see a lot of what's happening right now, it's really the issue is not really about anything else but gender imbalance. It's about the issues that we kind of allow to persist in a state like Haryana. Zero, a number which, have, which would have absolutely no value. But in this situation, here, tells you zero girls. Zero girls were born in Haryana in 2013, in over 4,000 villages. Zero. So now all of us will look at these numbers. What do we feel? Negativity? How can we blame the authorities? How can we hang somebody? How can we blame the judicial system? Whether it's a SIFA, whether it's Nirbhaya, we have these negative emotions amongst us. And it gets thrown back to me constantly in the work that I do to say, how can we go and do something about this situation? So I said, OK. Let's look at the situation from a solutions point of view. Let's look at it progressively. Two years ago, we actually launched an um, initiative which, talks, which, which went to train the policemen. 
because they're the first port of call when any victim, uh, when any victim goes to report a sexual crime. And they're just trained to deal with criminals and not victims. So we said, let's look at training them. Let's look at building a module in which we train every cop that graduates. We did that. We were very, very successful. But you know, it's, it, when you go again, you see all these situations keep happening again. The cop, the police commissioner of Delhi said, you know, just by wearing a uniform doesn't mean the guy changes his attitude from where he comes from. So then we're sitting back again with the problem and saying, okay, now what we do about it? So the time has come for all of us to think through how we can change the narrative. So we decided to do that and look for men, again, who made the choice to live in a state like Haryana and be ordinary men and do extraordinary things for women in the state of Haryana. No one would have thought of doing that. We thought of blaming the authorities or finding negativity further in the bad situation. Let's meet Sunil Jagran. He is a Sarpanch of Bibipur. He has two daughters. He looked around him and he said, in this village, women have absolutely no awareness of their rights and women have absolutely no awareness or the opportunity to go at the same platform and talk to men. I don't want to raise my children like this. I don't want to raise my two girls where they, where, where they stand up or grow up and say that we don't have an opportunity in society. So what did he do? He made a choice. He made a choice and he launched the first woman cup and child in his district. He goes around village by village to actually launch more women cup and child. Women never go to cup. And that's what he has done to make people more, uh, women more aware of their rights and give them an opportunity to stand side by side with men in their own villages. That's an amazing choice. That's the way to look at a situation with positivity. There's so much more to learn from him. Let's meet Baljeet Singh. Who is Baljeet Singh? He is the chief of the largest cup in Haryana. Whatever he says gets cast in stone. You know what he did? He made a choice to acknowledge female feticides. He made a choice to stand up amongst all the other cups and say, Hamare gaon mein koi betiyan nahi maregi. That means, in my village, no girl child will ever be killed. That's a strong statement. That's a choice he made despite all opposition from all the other cups because they do not want to even acknowledge the fact of female feticide. That's the story we want to tell. That's the positive change we want to bring about on the ground. That's the way in which you can actually be a change in the society that you want to see. Let's meet Jitendra Chhattar. Jitendra Chhattar is a farmer, a farmer in the Jin district. He married a woman who was raped 19 times by some local political group. 19 times. Her father then decided, let's get her married. She started looking for men to get her married. Along came Jitendra Chakar, the only guy who said, I will marry this girl. But she said one thing, the choice she made was, I have to tell this man what happened to me. No matter how difficult that choice was for her, she knew very well he would turn away and he would go. But she said, no, I will make the choice to tell her, tell him about what happened to me. And do you know what he said? He said, not only will I marry you, but I will also help you fight till the very end for your case to put these criminals behind bars. That's the choice he made. No matter how he would have been killed, he is almost all, he is today fighting that case, living with the fear of his life, but he chose to fight against all odds, but stand by this woman and make sure she not just fights the case, but he's also teaching her law to make sure she can fight cases of other women who are victims of rape. That's the choice, that's the power of choices 
and that the power of fighting against all adversity and making the right decision and the right choice. If that man sitting in the village can make that choice, if that man sitting in the village can see positivity from the you know, a, a great adversity of God, the, the, the rape capital of the world, the Kudimar state, that's what it's called. In those situations, if the farmer sitting there can do it, then that serves none of us sitting in this audience to stand up and make the choices we want to live with for the rest of our lives. And to make the choice to no matter what, look at the positivity in every situation and look at how we can bring about a change in every situation we want to live in. So there we obviously have no excuses to live and build positivity no matter what we do. I've made my choice, now it's time for you to make your choice. Thank you.